Hi everyone, in this video, we're going to take a look at the 2021 and the attendee problem 23. So you've got a square side length 8, 4 isosceles triangles with length 2, so 2, 2, 2, 2, and side length 8, so this is going to be 4, 4, 2, 2. You can probably see a white bar around this, kind of interesting. So 2, 2, 4, 4, so I'm just, this is 4, and the, the side length are 2, 2. We've got everything labeled, and then we've got this black diamond in the center, uh, the corner of it, in each corner of the square, and we've got a black diamond here, and a black diamond with side length 2 root 2 in the center of the square. This black diamond right here, 2 root 2, and even though they said diamond, it's actually going to be just like a tilted square, so it's a square, tilted square, because all the sides are equal, and we also see that it has to be 90 degrees in the center right there, since this is, has a length of 4 because this is also far. So we've got a circular coin being dropped. We've got a circular coin of diameter one. Be careful here. Diameter one, not radius one. So radius one half. It's gonna write that right there. So we don't forget. Radius one half in this box that. Because some some people might have probably thought that, that radius would be one. Be careful there. So radius is one half. And it lands in a random location in the square, so it's completely contained in the square. Every line in this problem is very important. Every line has importance. And if you miss even one line, you'll get the problem wrong. So contained within the square, that, what are the possibilities for where the coin can be? Well, if it's contained in the square, we can see that the center will have to be contained in this, in this let's say, let, center will have to be in this square here. The center has to be in this, loose, this light blue square I'm just drawing. The reason is, is that if the center is in the square, in this blue square I just drew, the light blue one, then the coin will be fully contained in the actual square. Because if it's like a coin right here, like for example, maybe, let me just draw it in. Let's say we've got something like this. Let's undo it straight. Something like this, let's say. Then you see, if the radius is one half, then this, if the center is in that blue square, it's, if it's on the very edge, it will just be tangent to both of the sides, just touching right there. So the center has to be in this region. And what is this square going to have? Well, notice that this is this has to be the radius, which is one half. Again, why you don't get confused between radius and diameter. So this will be one half here. And this will be one half here. Like, same thing. It has to be just on the edge. So that the center is one half to the left of it. And same thing, one half down as well. Same thing here. One half, one half. One half, one half. So we can see that the side length of this blue square is going to be 7 and 7. So 49 is the area of this light blue square right here. Okay, now what are the possibilities for where it can go? We found the area of the light blue square to be right here. And now we wanna find the probability that the coin will cover part of the black region of the square. Part of it, not necessarily has to be in the black region, this has to be a little bit black. It cannot be fully white basically what it's saying is that we cannot have a fully white square. That's what the problem is saying, telling us. There's no way we can have a fully white square. I just have to be like, even if it's just a little bit something in this diagram here, then that's good. So if it's fully contained in the square, you know something I should mention. It doesn't really matter whether like the, these possibilities where it's only touching is infinitely small compared to the overall grid. So that, that won't matter. So we're really only looking for the probability that the center, the, the coin will be fully. So rather than looking for the probability, it's going to be part partially black. So what is the probability it will be partially black? Well, just like earlier, like to find the total region, looking at the center, where the center will go is much easier than looking at where the coin will go. So let's see, where can the center go for it to have even a little bit of black? Well, obviously, if the center is in this black region, then it's going to have a little bit of black. But even if the center is a little bit outside this black region, even if it's distance of one half away, up to a distance of one half away from this black square, even then, it will still have a little bit of black. The reason being is if, if let's say it's like a one half here, let's say this is one half here, then we're gonna have a circle like this, and then still gonna have just a tiny sliver of black region right there. So basically, the region that's gonna be contained in is gonna be the region that's one half away from the square. Right. So what is the region that is one half away from the square? Well, the region that is one half away from the square is going to be this, this is actually kind of a clever trick that you have to know. It's going to be this region here. It's, it's this, if, if you've seen this kind of problem before, you're probably familiar with it, but it's going to be something like this, this region. 
And that's the, basically it's going to be on, along this line here. Those are the that's the possibility because the reason is is that any point inside this blue this blue kind of curved shape kind of partially curved partially non curved shape is because at any point here for example here the distance is one half and any point here the distance is always at most one half so that's why there's like a curved part here because after you, after you go past the side length now it has to be within one half away so the the conic that crosses out the section that's one half away from this vertex is this kind of quarter circle here. Because now we see that anything inside this blue kind of curved region works. So that's good. Now we've got one part of the problem. But this is not the only black region. The other black region is the triangles. The four triangles, yes. We have to also count for those. So where must the center be for the four triangles to work? Well, again, of course, obviously the center is anywhere in the triangle whatsoever. Or not, remember, in the triangle, but we probably shouldn't have erased that light blue square right there. But Basically, remember, the center still has to be in this region here. So what are the possibilities for the center? Well, notice that the center, if, if the center is in this region here, in this region here, obviously it will be partially black at least. Because if it's in this region here, then the center is there, so it's going to have to be somewhat black at least. But remember, just like we did for the square, it can also be a little bit outside of it if needed. So it can also be a little bit outside. So then what are the possibilities? So if it's a little bit, if it's just even a little bit outside, then it's actually going to carve out some other triangle here. It's going to cover up this triangle that's one half away. So it's very similar to the square. You can imagine that it's going to be this kind of region here. Like this. That's one half away. And then we can also see that it can also be one half away from this point. So it can also carve out this region. It can also go all the way there. And be very careful here. Because, for example, you can also have if it's if it's let's say here, this does work. So unlike this case, you drew the arc. This case, this point, this is a very kind of tricky thing you have to be on the lookout for. If it's something here, then the center can be the center, then then still gonna be one half away from black region because it's still part of the possibilities. It's just not where the center can be. So the center cannot be in this region, but the black region is still there. So you can still use that as a black region. So the triangle that it's gonna work is gonna be this triangle where again the radius is one half. So this distance right here, this, this blue distance, is going to be 1 half. And we can see this distance is going to be 1 half. This distance is going to be 1 half as well. Okay, so now we've got to find the area of this triangle. So how do we find the area of the triangle? Notice that the area of the triangle, well, notice that we can actually find the altitude of the triangle. Because notice that in this triangle here, in the black triangle, you can see that this altitude here is going to be square root 2 over 2 this green altitude, but this new pink triangle has an altitude that is, that is, this new altitude is going to be, uh, let me just try to mark it, this is going to be root 2 by 2 less, because this is going to be a 1 half, 1 half, root 2 over 2 triangle, so it's, it's going to be reduced by root 2 over 2, but increased by 1 half on this, on this region here, so really, the altitude goes from being root, sorry, not, root, yeah, root, to not be root 2 over 2, it should be root 2, because 2 divided by root 2 is root 2, so, the altitude will, not, will go from being root 2 to being root 2 minus root 2. This is going to be 1 half, 1 half, and this is going to be root 2, 1 half times root 2, so root 2 by 2. So then we can see that that altitude is going to be root 2. And then the altitude there is just going to be root 2 over 2, so minus root 2 over 2, plus 1 half. And this is equal to 1 half plus root 2 by 2, which is root 2 plus 1 by 2. So that is the altitude of our triangle. So it should be, we should sub subtract, we, this altitude is just going to be subtracting that from here because we're subtracting root 2 over 2 from altitude, just to make it clear. Subtract this altitude here, root 2, root 2. We subtract root 2 by 2 because 1 half times root 2 is root 2 over 2. And we add back this 1 half, we get root 2 plus 1 over 2. Then we do, it's going to be root 2 plus 1 over 2 squared. It's going to be equal to 3 plus 2 root 2 over 2 by 4. So that will be the area of the of the triangle, of course. But then we have to divide by 2 because we, oh, sorry, we don't have to actually divide by 2 because the area of the triangle is just going to be this altitude times this, this, this base here times 10, 2 divided by 2 because the area of this pink triangle is just the product of the altitude and the base divided by 2, which is the same thing as seeing the product of the altitude and half of the base. And half of the base is going to be also going to be root the same the same altitude here. 
by 45, 45, 90, since the triangle is similar. So then we can, from here, we can see that the area of, triangle of one triangle is going to be this quantity. So the area of four triangles is going to be times four, which is three plus two root two. Okay, we found the area of all four triangles. Now let's find the area of the square-like region in the center right here. What is the area of the square-like region? How can we find it? Simple. We just say that this is going to be one half, and we just add up the regions. Two root two squared is simply eight. The area of, of the of the each of the four rectangles is simply two root two times one half, which is root two. So this is each going to be root two, root two, root two, root two. Four root twos. Overall, the area is eight plus four root two. But of course, you have to add the area of each of the the four the four you know like arc like regions. And what are the area of the four arc like regions? Four times one half squared pi, which is four times one fourth pi or pi. So we add pi. So we can see that this is going to be eight plus four root two plus pi, and it's also going plus pi over four times four. So it's going to be one sorry pi over four because you're just going to carve out a whole circle. And it's going to have radius 1 half, 1 half, and it's just going to be 1 half squared times 5 is pi over 4. And then from here we can see that this is going to be the region on the outside here. And 3 plus root 2, 2 plus root 2, is going to be the area of this other region here, as they found by the triangle logic. So from here we can see that we just add them all up. We get 11 plus 6 root 2 plus pi over 4. Which from here we can see that this is, we want to find the value of this over 49. But then it's saying our answer form has to be of this form. So essentially, we want to find 196 times this quantity here. And 196 times this quantity here is going to be this quantity here in the inside here, ignoring this. So what is 196 times this quantity? Notice that 196 is 4 times 49. This gives us an answer of 44 plus 24 root 2, giving plus pi. And then that gives us an answer of 44, which is A, plus 24, which is B, which gives 68, and we are finally done. Just to recap the key steps, this is a tricky problem. So you have to look at the regions, and the general consensus here is that look for the region that's a distance away. And that will be, you can like imagine, just if you're not sure what it's going to be, just like draw out all the possibilities like this. And that should hopefully give you a picture, pictorial idea. And I believe that on, on the ancient 10B problem last year, there was a similar thing except in 3D. So that was another cool problem you should definitely check out. So basically, as you can see here, we did this logic of it's going to be just a little bit more and then it's going to carve out that whole region. We did that for the whole figure and we got our answer. I hope you all enjoyed this video as this problem involved some key insights here as it was in number 23, so is towards the end of the test. And the main thing is you have to find the triangles and then you look at the altitudes of the triangles, you look at the area of each of the regions and we're done. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.